Hi there, thank you for joining us and welcome to the next session for Global Partnership Day. In this session, we're exploring the recipe for success. This is something that we would usually run one-on-one -on -one with our customers, but we wanted to take the key learnings and combine them with what we see day to day when it comes to running a successful partnership program. And we're excited to share those insights with you today. My name is Sarah Kelly. I'm the Marketing Director here at Partnerize, and I am joined by the wonderful Kelly Guerin, who is the Partnerships Director for the APAC region. I'm going to hand over to Kelly to get us started with Recipe One. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so I'm going to be taking you through Recipe One of Three, and this is the recipe for channel growth. So I will be sharing with you what our most successful and experienced clients are actually doing in the channel to drive continued revenue growth and return on investment. So an important aspect of any marketing strategy is of course having an awareness of the environmental context. So when COVID-19 first hit, there was obviously a lot of uncertainty about how it would affect the economy and all of Australia's biggest brands. And interestingly, for many online retailers, they, are, they experienced accelerated growth during this period as we saw a shift to online spending. And we're now entering a period of renewed optimism. So there have been positive vaccine developments. Consumer confidence is up 6% or was up 6% in April, which was the third straight month in a row. And interestingly, the country has also had two quarters of more than 3% GDP growth. So overall, these are all reasons why we should be feeling very excited and positive about what's to come. So moving on to program strategy and to achieve growth in this channel, it really requires a multifaceted approach. In terms of goals, we need to be focused on more than just revenue coming from the channel. We also need to be understanding more nuanced metrics such as profitability as a whole and also on an individual partner level. We need to have a good handle on the data too. So companies these days spend so much money on data management systems, but this is meaningless unless we are actually analyzing that data and garnering insights. So of course, this also needs to feed back into your goals as per my first point, you know, measuring just uh, more than just revenue. And thirdly, we need to be adaptable and flexible based on what this data tells us and um, based on the customer behavioral trends as well. So what can you actually do? And I'll build on my last three points um, and provide some actionable next steps. So number one, start by thinking about what metrics are important to you beyond revenue. A profitability analysis can help you identify what partners are driving the most value and then allow you to dig into why this actually is. So it may be a case that a partner is driving higher AOV or selling higher margin products. And your commission strategy should complement your goals in this regard. So if you find that a certain category is now a business priority or um, a certain category drives 30% more margin, then this should ideally be reflected in your commissioning so that you're incentivizing the sale of the right kind of stock. When we consider data, of course, looking beyond just revenue, look at your partners and their individual unique statistics. So consider, again, average order value per partner. You could look at product analysis, um, customer type analysis, so is one partner better at driving you new customers than another and why is this and can it be further optimized? And our last point here is around ensuring a customer centric approach and a seamless purchase journey. So there's a tendency for affiliates to operate as a silo. We really need to ensure that we are aligning this channel with the wider business strategy and that it's complementing what we are doing in other marketing channels. So in a similar vein, we also need to take insights from customer behavior and purchase trends. And we always encourage a partnerize, a test and learn approach to this channel so that you can actually find that sweet spot where you're getting a maximum amount of sales at your desired CPA or ROI target. I think some great points there, Kelly, with recipe one. And one of the things that we really wanted to share today was not just the what, but the how. 
So we've got three ways that you can utilize the Partnerize platform if you're one of our customers to achieve success. Firstly, commissioning. You know, Kelly just gave some great ideas on areas that you can commission. So make sure that you do use the platform to set those up, whether that's commission specific to a campaign, a partner, or just general commissioning rules. You can set up as many of these as you would like. Once you've got your commissioning all sorted, it's time to report back on your results. You can utilize the data that you're passing through the platform alongside our reporting tools to create custom reports. So you can share higher level reports such as overall revenue, you know, if you need it for that next internal meeting, or as Kelly suggested, you can create reports at more of an individual level. So that might be the value of partners or um, things you can use to fuel your next conversation with individual partners. And last but not least, the attribution. So wherever you're at in that growth journey, being able to look at this channel alongside other channels and that overall customer journey is really important. And that's something that you can do within the platform um, as well as with other technologies that you integrate with, such as DoubleClick. So that leads us into recipe two. Um, cue the ominous music here for the secrets, um, but it is something that we thought was quite important to cover. We're so lucky at Partnerize that we work with just some incredible customers across the globe. And one of the things that we've really noticed is that those who are successful in running a program, they tend to have common traits or, or success metrics that they use to really ensure that they have a strong program. So we wanted to share some of these secrets with you today. The first secret to success is really around letting your data make decisions for you. Back in recipe one, Kelly just gave you some great points um, around data. I think it's important to understand that it's not just about taking the data you have, it's about continuously optimizing so that you can get the best results. So really taking a deep dive into what you've got. And the best way you can do that is to actually pull in the data parameters that matter to you. I think we see too many programs where all we focus on is, is new versus existing. And while that is a really important data metric to look at, you can bring in a whole array of other things that are important, not only to your program, but to your business, whether that's things around location, loyalty, you know, any data point that's important to you. The second secret is really about treating your affiliates as partners. This is, uh, this is always a fun conversation topic in our industry around, is it affiliate marketing, is it partner marketing, and um, you know, whatever your preference really, but at Partnerize, we do call it partner marketing because the channel has evolved so much that it really has become a two-way partnership. And those who run successful programs definitely embrace that. It's about working directly with your partners to have proper conversations around growth goals, KPIs, and helping each other to succeed. The second part of that is that affiliates are always going to be the cornerstone of a successful program, but you can definitely look to evolve your program to other partnership types and definitely across the funnel. So we can look at content partners, influencers, brand partners, offline, I could go on and on but definitely incorporating a wider approach to your partnership strategy is always gonna help you. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about commissioning. We talked in recipe one about growth-centric commissioning, and it's certainly something that we see, you know, partnership superstars utilizing. It's not just about setting up those commission structures to suit your own goals, but really taking a deeper dive into what you're doing and what you're trying to achieve. So looking at which categories are performing and uh, you know, changing your commissions to suit that, and also looking at which categories need a boost. We had a great panel session this morning on travel, and one of the things they talked about was the fact that domestic travel at the moment, you know, some areas are booming and some are really struggling. So if you're a travel marketer, how can you change your commission structures to help drive demand to those areas that really need it? I think the main takeaway here is, you know, a successful program is really someone who invests in it. And that approach and moving away from set and forget is always going to put you on the right path.
Thanks, Sarah. And yeah, I couldn't agree more with that last point. Um, so with those insights, I think a big question is how can the Partners platform actually help you to achieve this and become more successful? One of the best tools that you have at your disposal with the Partnerize platform is the Partner Discovery tool. So Partner Discovery allows you to search for and identify new partners based on metrics such as audience size, how they perform in specific verticals. So you can actually see if you're a fashion brand, whom the top partners are in that particular vertical. And this easily helps you to identify the partners that you should be working with. Um, based on brands that are, of course, similar to yours. As of last month, we launched a new prospecting tool, which takes this a step further again and enables users to search for and identify partner opportunities, which may not yet exist on the platform. So this is actually a great tool, um, specifically for finding influencers and bloggers based on their audience and reach. So we're actually pulling in all of that data into the platform. We also offer an advanced commissioning tool, which enables you to centralize and automate your entire commissioning strategy. So one of the reasons that our clients really love this tool is that it allows you to commission on any data point that you track and send to us. So some examples of what I would refer to as smart commissioning strategies are rules based on customer type, category, uh, rewarding partners for driving higher basket values, and also implementing commission caps. So this ensures that you don't exceed your target cost per sale. And all of our commissions also track in a pending state, and this is really important. So this means that advertisers have the ability to review these sales and accept or reject before payment, ensuring that you're optimizing that ROI. So I wanted to highlight in a bit more detail a very new launch of ours, which is Advanced Partner Profiles. And this again builds on the data points I previously mentioned about our partner discovery tool. However, with these new and improved profiles, you can get even more data on the potential value of partners, including website traffic. So this is supported by our partner similar web. You can study the user behavior on site. So you can evaluate the bounce rate, the pages per visit, and this helps you to see how engaged this audience is. And then you can also look at the demographics and interests. So all of this combined really helps you to make an informed decision and ensures that you're only investing time with the right partners that are gonna really drive you results. And I'll move now on to recipe three. And although this might not sound like the most exciting topic, in my experience, it is 100% the most important and most overlooked factor that determines success in this channel. So I have experience working with um, customers for the past five years and every brand I have worked with has limited resource and time. So some brands may have allocated affiliate managers, whereas for others, there is one marketing manager and um, the affiliate channel is just one aspect of their job. I think regardless of structure, time optimization is essential. There is no one size fits all approach in terms of running an affiliate program. It really depends on your goals, um, the size of your budget, and also the complexities you have in terms of setup. So one big decision that needs to be made is whether you run your program in-house or have an agency manage it on your behalf. Um, this doesn't need to be concrete or set in stone and it doesn't need to be decided early on. Um, you know, things may change over time and we do see some brands um, start with an agency and then move to in-house and vice versa. In terms of goals, it's really important to have a clear vision on your annual and quarterly goals and then be able to break this down into weekly, ta weekly tasks that will actually drive impact. Um, based on these goals and the amount of resource you have, this may mean that you decide to focus on just optimizing those top three to four partners. Or if brand building and content creation is a really big priority for your business, you may instead decide to focus your time on growing the long tail and onboarding influencers. So you might be wondering, what should my time allocation actually look like? And it's interesting because before the advent of technology platforms, a lot more time would have been spent on tasks such as reporting, invoicing, validations. And I think all in all, affiliate management was probably a very operational role. 
However, with platforms like Partnerize, a lot of this is actually now automated. So what this does do is it allows more focus on business development and developing relationships with existing partners um, or finding new opportunities. So an area like brand partnerships is very um, popular and attractive right now. So this can actually provide you more time to strategize and focus on building these brand partnerships. Ideally, brands should be connecting with partners on a weekly basis. So understanding what new opportunities they have, um, sh sharing performance insights. And I would even encourage brands to share their own goals. So this may be something that you consider doing on a quarterly basis. Outside of this, testing is also really important. So generating um, performance hypotheses, for example, if I increase commission, on a set range of products, um, can I drive more sales and overall uh, traffic? So regular reporting will support this testing and provide insights for what you should be testing next. In Partnerize, we do have pre-built and saved reporting options, which can help automate and save time on this. And then finally, ensuring timely payments and transparency will really help you to maintain strong relationships. So the faster a partner gets paid, the faster they can actually reinvest that money into growing their business and yours. I think some really like interesting points there, Kelly, and you're, you're right, it's definitely probably one of the most overlooked areas, but absolutely important. We've, um, we've got an interesting session coming up later today um, about the future of the channel. And I know one of the talking points is around how is the role of a partnership manager going to change? You know, what does that look like in five years? And I think you've, uh, you've just answered some of that there. So super, super interesting. When it comes to the partnerized platform supporting you, um, you know, there's a whole array of things that we can do. And you know, technology has evolved so much that it's really all about automation. And um, Kelly gave some great examples of how you can automate things within the platform. And it's definitely something you should be doing. You know, in our opinion, like anything you can automate, do it. It's gonna save you time and it's gonna let you focus on the areas that are most important to you. So whether it's validations, reporting, communications, whatever it is, if you can automate it, go ahead and do it. The second thing that is probably also a little bit overlooked because it's uh, not super exciting is payments. And um, payments for me is one of the hidden gems of Partnerize. Like we just make it as easy as possible. Like I think gone are the days where you know you spend half a day a week going through invoices, making sure they're all sorted and they're uh, here, there, and everywhere. I think now the fact that with the platform you can get one invoice. And then you know that as soon as we receive the funds, we'll pay out your partners within 24 hours. So your partners are happy. They're not waiting for, you know, end of month payment runs or, or chasing you up. And it means that you, again, can focus your time on what's going to help you grow the business. You'd rather that your partners were focused on conversations with you than emailing you about, oh, when am I going to get paid? And one of the last and probably a little more exciting ways that you can use the platform is definitely through the AI capabilities. So we've weaved AI kind of all the way through the platform, but it definitely is there to help you. It's not just there to help you though with automation, it's there to help you be a little bit smarter in how you manage your time and your program. So for example, you know, rather than spending two, three hours a week scrolling through your CRM partner discovery, trying to find new partners, the AI will actually recommend partners that are right for you. And they'll look at the type of partner they are, how they're performing with similar brands, et cetera. On the flip side of that, you know, the, the sort of ominous side is very much around fraud. And again, like rather than you having to try and spend time identifying possible fraud, the AI will go through all of your transactions, um, right through from clicks to conversions, and pick up anything that's fraudulent, and it will send you an automated alert in real time. So definitely making sure that you can use these features to save as much time as possible will help you spend your time a lot more wisely. We hope that you have found today's session useful um, and that you've got some recipes of your own to start working on. You know, the three recipes that we've gone through, channel growth, the secrets, and managing your time, 
they can all be super valuable when it comes to turning your program around. But something that we do want to say, almost a disclaimer, um, is, you know, start small. Like We've gone through a lot of things today. You do not have to leave this session and go implement all of those things at once. Take your time, do one thing at a time, make one change and test and learn as you go. And before you know it, you will have a thriving partnership program. And don't forget, like the partnerized customer success and partnership teams are always here to support you on that journey as well. On behalf of Kelly and myself, thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for more great sessions coming up.